What's up, y'all? Something we all hope to do is to make this world a better place. There is a man that is an inspiration to young and old all across the world. He served in the Navy, he's rafted down the Mississippi River, and hiked over a thousand miles of the Appalachian Trail. At 82 years young, he's teaching us how to live healthy, wealthy, and wise lives. So without further ado, meet Greybeard the Adventurer. Like a uh, video. Yeah, like. So where do you come from? Tennessee. What are you doing here? Hiking the Appalachian Trail. Can we see your van? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What do you call that? Is that a hiker trash? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> just thrown in there. <laughs> So are you starting or finishing or? Uh, just, my dad's halfway and he's flip flopping and okay. going down. I'm just doing a week. Who's your dad? Greybeard. How old is he? 82. We're gonna go find him. Yeah. <laughs> he's the oldest, he's striving to be the oldest through hiker on the trail. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you go, so I think we were in Franklin together. We were? Yeah, probably. Did you, is there like a health food store there that you were at? 3 April? April sounds, April 3rd? Yeah. Uh, maybe not. I started April so 1st. I tried to, I hiked out of Franklin. Yeah. yeah. Very like nice. That day. Woo. So you're 82 and hiking the trail. What's, yeah. what are the keys to a, a, a healthy, wealthy, and wise life? Well, I give about a 35 minute presentation all over the U.S. Uh, motivational speeches and it boils down to three things. I think and it's a real quickie, it's happiness, you gotta figure that out. Spiritual, living a spiritual life, you gotta figure that out. And outside activity, not knocking the gym, but you gotta figure that out. That's awesome. Food, you gotta figure food, it out. eat a variety of foods and that includes meat. It includes meat. 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 <laughs> yeah, I would I would respectfully disagree. <laughs> some of the some of the uh, Vegans don't don't like to hear that, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're starting southbound now. Yeah, I just finished Katahdin down to the bridge. Sweet. Yesterday. How was your hike up Katahdin? Oh, it was fantastic. It, was, it would have been better the day before yesterday, and it would have been better today. But yesterday was still wonderful. It just I just don't like wet rocks. It was raining a little bit, but. The, the good thing is these granite rocks here have warts, thousands of warts where you put your foot and your foot doesn't slide very much on these rocks. That's awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the trail. You bet. Take care. Good morning, y'all. We're at the uh, White House Landing, the hostel in the middle of the 100-mile wilderness. I'm gonna pack up, we're gonna go eat breakfast, and we get to hike with Greybeard today, which is gonna be awesome. Good morning. How are you? Great. I'm, I'm late. Wonderful breakfast. Awesome. Yeah, I'm used to both. I grew up in both. <laughs> How do you feel this morning? I feel great. I got spots with me. I always feel good. You keep track of your journey on that, right? Huh? Isn't there a map online that you can mark your... Yeah. People oh, can follow you. Follow every... Boat on the 18, no one would believe you. You guys have fun. Thanks, Bill. Stay out of trouble. What does your pack weigh? What did it weigh coming into this 100 mile wilderness? My weight was when I left, I got a scale in the van. It was 25 and a half pounds. I've never hiked with that much weight in the whole AT. Usually when I'm full, it's 23 and a half. When I'm going out just for one night, I, I, including water, I can get it under 20 pounds. 
We'll have to take this pack off and see what I, what's, what's going on with my hip. Maybe it's just simply the weight. Hey, so you use gut hooks? I use that and I use the National Geographic. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to... I'm going to have to go really slow because I'll mess my whole day up if I don't. I'm not used to 25 pounds! <laughs> <laughs> this pack, it is so comfortable. When I get it down to ultra light, it's like I don't have one on. That's definitely not right. It's supposed to be nine, I guess, but I don't know what it's supposed to be. Well, it looks like it was a 500. 500 what? 500 miles from where, though? <laughs> Somebody's personal sign. Probably a section. Yeah. yeah something like that. So what did you do to train for this hike? A hike. If you're gonna do something, you what do you what do you how do you train for it? You, you do 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 the activity you're gonna be doing. If you're gonna swim, you swim. If I'm gonna paddle a boat, you know what I did? I got a pond at my house. Got a dam. <clears throat> so I put the bow of the canoe up in, in the dam and just Paddle, you know, like like I was trying to push the dam down, down. And of course, you know how a boat works. Paddling, the paddle doesn't necessarily move through the water, but the it, water pushes the pressure on the water pushes the boat forward. Well, in that case, the boat couldn't go forward, so I had to had to pull the paddle through the water. And that was the best exercise I could come up with. Any GM anywhere couldn't come, couldn't compete, could not compete with that technique of training. It takes me a lot longer in the morning to get going than does a young person. It takes a lot longer to heal than a young person. What did you say again? It's 114.5. 14. Oh yeah, okay. 114.5 and it's 15.1. From Katahdin to the bridge. Yes. Where, where the one at Mile Wilderness starts. So it's 0.6. So it's like 99 point something. Yeah. Six or something like that. Yeah. So this is 100 miles, in other words. I've already done 25 on that end. Yeah. I've done 30 on this end. After Monson. So that's 55. You got 45 to go to Monson. No, I only have to go to Iron Works. Oh, yeah. And then you go to Monson and hike out from there? I hike, yes, yeah, south from Monson. Yeah. How, and how many miles have you done total? Uh, when I get to uh, Iron Works Road, it'll be a little over 1,200. I don't think I got my trail legs. The only trouble is the heavy backpack makes the joints hurt. I haven't had any trouble with my knees yet. I'm blessed there. But the hips and the ankles hurt if I have too much weight. Without much weight, they don't hurt. What happened after you retired? Did you keep moving or was there ever a period where you just sat down? And didn't do anything? Well, when I retired, and me, as probably for the first couple of months, I just sort of sat around. I figured out real fast that every day was Saturday except Sunday. So, went church on Sunday. <laughs> Other than that, there was no difference. But then I realized that that's not gonna work. So I got active around the house, and, and we have um, we had a home at that time in another part of Bartlett, Tennessee, and did a lot of projects around there. And we, then we bought some land, and I started preparing that to build a house on, which we eventually built on. But I actually never, uh, 
I never, I didn't get started into long distance adventures until around 2005. I retired in 2002. 2005, I went on my first long distance paddle. I paddled from where I was born in Kentucky, down the creek and down the small rivers to uh, Columbia, uh, to the Cumberland River, to the Tennessee River, Kentucky Lake into the Ohio, down the Mississippi, and to, to Memphis, where I lived. That was a 17-day trip. And then I got hooked. You got to stay moving, I guess. So most of my exotic adventures, if you want to mention, say that, were paddling experiences, not hiking. So what do you think about hiking compared to paddling? Well, I've hiked a lot in, in Arizona and Utah, but never multi-months, just multi-weeks. <laughs> so when you're going up the Mississippi, did you have to portage your canoe around the locks, or how did that work? Well, actually paddling down from the, its source, north-central Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico, Yes, you have to pour these. As a matter of fact, unknown to most people, there were 40 dams on the Mississippi. And only about 10 of those uh, did not have locks that you could paddle in a lock and it lowers the water and you paddle out the other end. But those 10, minus one that they'd blown out, you had to paddle over the rapids there. But nine of those, you have to literally portage your way around the dam. And some of them are big. It's, some of them, it's, it's a long way around. It's not just a mile, but more than that, in some cases. You got a mosquito in your nose. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's hardly any cargo ships that travel the Mississippi River beyond New Orleans. Oh, so or it's Baton short. Rouge. Baton Rouge. Okay. But barges, they go all the way up to uh, now to, to Minneapolis. They used to go beyond that, but the, the first lock coming down river is used to be in downtown Minneapolis, which they would bring the barges up above. But they closed that, that lock forever. And incidentally, we were the last Oh, I had some other people paddling with me. I was in a boat alone, but they were paddling with me, a film crew. And we were the last uh, source to see group to ever paddle through that lock. Nice. Because it's closed forever now. Try to keep the Asian cart from going up, up there. Did you party any? And there were quite a few mosquito casinos along the way, but I didn't go in the casino. <laughs> I left my money in the restaurants, not in the casino. Nice. <laughs> my friend one gallon and he got that name because the first time he hiked the AT he was at halfway point he's supposed to eat a half gallon of ice cream and they didn't have a half gallon so he ate the whole gallon <laughs> <laughs> he's been one gallon ever since now one gallon if you're out there and you happen to see this can't wait for you to walk up behind me and throw those big arms around me and goddess, if you're out there, you are still my adopted granddaughter on the trail. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nobody can replace Bill Hanneman. Did you ever Google his name? Google Bill Hanneman, you'll be shocked. And that's only about one uh, tenth of what he's done on Google. But he's not very good about putting stuff up on the internet. So you're very you're very connected with the uh, social media world on the internet. Uh, the paddle world, yeah, really, really well known in the paddle world. How do uh, how do the people out here that that don't carry like cell phones respond to your walk right by me? Your actions on social media. Or walk right by me. <laughs> You go on social media, you can say, are you a gray beard? You're most of stuff, it's not even up there yet. 
So Bill Netterman is one gallon. Bill Netterman is one gallon. That's exactly correct. N-E-D-D-E-R-M-A-N. Netterman. He lives in Idaho. Iowa, Iowa. Small farm in southern Iowa. He doesn't live anywhere. A small tree farm in southern Idaho. Does he ever go? A tree farm would be perfect for him because he can just... Idaho, Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Yeah. Small tree farm in southern Iowa. But he never goes home. I guess trees... Yeah, he goes home for winter. Oh, he does? He, but his home is a... It's like a one room, no electricity, no plumbing. One stove. And he lives in that one room log house through the winter. But he plans his next year, or his next journey, which is probably going to be about nine months out of the year, there in that little log house in the winter. The reason I saw him so many times coming down the Mississippi River because he, several times he would paddle down and make sure that his trips ended up in the Mississippi so he could paddle on down the Mississippi and then over to Dallas and spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with his uh, sister. That's well, important. I know him too much. You know what I Some old person to get recognition for something they do in the physical world. <laughs> I Maybe. Really think that. Maybe you're on to something. And especially since I was, I, I paddled for juvenile diabetes on the Mississippi. And we raised a, a lot of money for research. And uh, I'm actually, I can for juvenile diabetes, but I'm not, I'm not trying to raise money. I'm just trying to raise a awareness of it. Another reason I'm hiking is to, uh, Raise awareness of the life and death of Chief Greybeard, the Indian. That's the reason I spell it G-R-E-Y instead of G-R-A-Y. Do you feel a spiritual connection to Chief Greybeard? Yeah, kind of, you might say. If I think about how he died, I almost cried. Because he, he basically shot him in prison. They said he was trying to escape, but <laughs> they didn't have to shoot him after this. And he died in prison in Florida. My doubt is, I bet he wasn't even trying to escape. Some guy just shot him for something and told everybody he was trying to escape. They say we're civilized, but we're. We're civilized animals then. Have you seen a white blaze for a while? <laughs> no. I haven't either. There's one. There's a white right there. White blaze. Sometimes I take because I'm moving the vehicle. I might take two to the vehicle in a week. Sometimes I pipe eight or ten days without having a zero day. Hey! What's up? You look familiar. Greybeard right here? Huh? What, what's your trail name? Downward Cow. Oh, you're Greybeard. I'm Greybeard. Yeah. I have never met you. We haven't met before. Have you Hello. Yep, Greybeard right here. Hey, how's it going? I'm pretty good. Now are you, you're flip-flopping? Yeah. This is Tex. Tex? Um, What's up? Cold blood. I'm just sectioning from Connecticut. Maine. Cold blood? Yeah. I know, it sounds scary. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm hot blood, so maybe the two of those will work out okay. <laughs> Where are you guys heading for today? Oh, I'm trying to get 15 miles. Yeah, that's good. Wherever cool. that is. Yeah, this is nice terrain though, so. And uh, I, I just flip flop at Boiling Springs. Oh, okay, yeah. So I've done over half of it already. Ever, uh, well, I've done it all except for one mile. Oh, okay, yeah. At Harper's Ferry itself. <laughs> one you weren't missing Harper's anything Ferry. there. <laughs> I'm going to go back there when I get to Boiling Springs and finish that one mile. So you guys are invited to come there if you want to. Oh. All right.
to follow me on my, did I give you one of my decals before? I actually took a picture of one in the trail, in one of the You photographed one? Yeah. Uh-oh. Here they are. So, my Facebook account as well as my website will say when that will be. Okay. So we're trying to get a big crowd following me. That's what we're trying to do. So you might be close by. And you can finish, you can finish, you guys got two more, three more days, that's about it. Yeah. Little decal, see, most people are putting them on an attraction pole. Oh, okay. See? Oh, yeah. If you want to put it in now, I'll store away. Let me have it. So. Yeah. All right, how are y'all? Your face really looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -mm, little section. But I started two weeks ago. Two or three weeks ago. You flip up and going north yeah, and south? Yeah, flip yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Graveyard. No, I'm you're Sarge. Uh, nice to meet you. You're what? Sarge. Four. Hey, well, they get that age wrong. I made it too. Unreal. <laughs> Can I get a picture with you? Yes, you certainly may. Oh, I love that. My yeah, I'm, I'm a documented by the Conservancy as the oldest person attempting the record right now. There was a couple others started, but they all fell and broke something. Okay. Perfect. And your trail name? My name's Highlander. Highlander? Yes, sir. I think there might be a few of us, well, actually. Well, I can tell you one thing. That's I'm... a great name. I'm getting me a Highlander when I get back home. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I left one mile down at Harper's Ferry between the river and the office. They're gonna have a big party there. <laughs> nice. Watch my website. Oh, let me give you one of my decals. Yes, absolutely. Watch my website, you'll know what it is. And if you're in the area, come mm -hmm. over and hike with us that last that. month. I might do that, absolutely. When's that going down? Be last week in September, give or take a week or something. Perfect, perfect. I I'm might taking my time, I'm talking to people. So, yeah, yeah. So many people, probably a thousand people I've met that are coming up now. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm having to stop almost at every group. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, good luck to Take you. Care. Take care. Some people are drink dealing with big bleeding like that. I need to sort of say, fine. Keep looking straight ahead and keep walking. Yeah. They're missing so much in this world. That kind of personality. Don't you think so? Well, without a doubt. Other people, I think when we learn how to focus on other people instead of ourselves, it makes us happy. Huh? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Now this looks like the trail. It's right there, doesn't it? I mean, that looks just what? like a trail that leads up to here. Is that somebody in a hammock down there? Oh, that's a sign. Oh. That doesn't look like the trail. <laughs> but it looks like I see the lean-to ahead. Yeah. So I'm going that way. <laughs> Mr. Cameraman. Are you going through are you the going? You going through the woods? Yeah. I'm following you. I think a tree just fell down up there. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. That's the best water I've ever drank in my life. Here comes a hiker. Is this it? What's up? I told you it was your friend. <laughs> hey, so how was the 100 mile wilderness? It was tough on me. Yeah? Yeah, because I didn't drink enough for two days. Water tastes like swamp water. Alright y'all, so 
Now you know who Greybeard is. You can follow along on his Facebook at Greybeard Adventurer. If there's one thing that he taught me spending time with him, it's to keep a positive attitude no matter what. If your body hurts, if something's going wrong, if the weather sucks, don't give up. Power through it and just keep have have a tough head like and that toughness needs to be a smile like oh even if you gotta grit your teeth and smile do it so have a great night and thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want more subscribe and if you think somebody else will like it please share there's some awesome people out here and it's absolutely beautiful in Maine so stay tuned I'll see y'all soon Thank you.